Hello my friends and welcome to our brand new blind let's play Homestuck for the PC. My name is Afutless Bird, this is your story based gaming channel, and today, a story about some kids who are friends of the internet. They decide to play a game together, there are major consequences. The fourth, final, most famous of the MS Paint adventures, while it began as a mock game following video commands like the previous adventures, they were phased out as the story unfolded into a mixed media barrage of mid-2000s internet culture satire, interpersonal drama, and weird plot stuff. One up your problem solution, action-packed gifs, Homestuck spiced up pivotal moments with flash animations scored by a lively team of composers. Over time, the music team produced dozens of albums across a variety of genres. I have no idea what this game is about, except for what I just read to you. And apparently this game broke the internet a couple times. So I'm really excited to see what this is all about. It says up here, click here to enable music, and you must reach page 440 before you can play music. Well, that means we just gotta get started. So let's do this, my friends. Hope you're all having a wonderful, fantastic day today. Yes, indeed. I have no idea what this game is about. Just none. A young man stands in his bedroom. It just so happens that today, the 13th of April, 2009, is this young man's birthday. Though it was 13 years ago that he was given life, it is only today he will be given a name. What will this name of the young man be? And we're going to call him, let's see, enter name. Zoo smell, oh lord. No, that's, that's not what we want to do. Try again. John Egbert. All right, well, apparently he's Mr. John Egbert. And he's got a, uh, a very happy shirt. You know, it's a very, very happy shirt. Examine the room. Your name is John. As was previously mentioned, it is your birthday. A number of cakes are scattered about your room. You have a variety of interest. You have a passion for really terrible movies. And you like to program computers. But you're not very good at it. You have a fondness for paranormal lore. And are an aspiring amateur magician. You also like to play games sometimes. What will you do? Ah, uh, let's see. Quickly retrieve arms from drawer. <laughs> I love the animations here. Your arms are in your magic chest, poop lord. Remove the cake. Oh, quickly retrieve arms from drawer. Remove the cake. Out of sympathy for John's perceived lack of arms, you pick up the cake for him and put it on his bed. John, quickly retrieve arms from magic chest. Oh, oh, look, we got, <laughs> we, there really is arms in the chest. And a uh, hammer and nails on the floor. I really like his happy shirt, though. It reminds me of Slimer from uh, Ghostbusters. You know what? It probably is Slimer from Ghostbusters. Uh, I would not be surprised. I mean, Slimer is really cool. I like Slimer as a kid. You retrieve your fake arms from the chest. You use these for hilarious antics. Your capture log. You capture log them in your Silidex. You have no idea what that actually means. <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> Uh, here's our capture log up here. Uh, there are other items in the chest. And there is a game, bro. And there's hammer. Guy. We're doing away. It's April. Beta. Hmm. Examine the contents of the chest. And here you keep an array of humorous and mystical artifacts. One, each one, a devastating weapon in the hands of a skilled magician or a cunning prankster. But you're neither one of these things. Among the artifacts are two fake arms, currently cataloged in your Silidex, one pair of trick handcuffs, one stunt sword, one magician's hat, one pair of beagle pus glasses, several smoke pellets, several blood capsules, and one copy of Colonel Sassaker's daunting text of magical frivolity and practical japery, and one copy of Harry Anderson's Wise Guy by Mike Caverny. Some of this stuff may come in handy at some point, but for now, I decided to just take some smoke pellets. 
Click here for an important advice of how to read Homestuck. Sure, why not? About Homestuck. Homestuck. Background information. Don't worry. This is the last interruption for now. We'll leave you alone after this page. Homestuck is a written comic um, by Andrew Hussey, originally hosted on a now dead website, MS Paint Adventures, commonly referred to as MSBA. It began as Hussey's small and personal project. It hosted a small web comic called Jailbreak. The second one was Bard Quest, followed by Problem Suit, and Homestuck is the fourth. A month before it started, Hussey started making a series of terrible comics called Sweet Bro and Hella Jeff. This series began outside of MSBA, but was eventually entered into Homestuck. A Homestuck character chemically makes him. SBAHA is bad on purpose, it's supposed to be as terrible as possible. Homestuck contains references to past MSBA comics, but you don't have to read them to understand anything important. The references aren't all that huge, but if you decide to read them, probably after finishing Homestuck, you know, whenever that occurs, uh, because you have a video series to make, they are all included in this collection. Three days before the start of Homestuck, Hussey published the beta version. The last of the three days was replaced by the proper version. The story basically started over from the beginning with minor changes. It was a user-driven website. Readers could submit commands, the title pages, and Hussey would use him in the story. During jailbreak, he always used the first command he got no matter what. Later on, he took a more coherent approach and picked one from the list of submissions by himself. Homestuck started with suggested commands as well. This is why the beginning is weird. During Act 2, Hussey toned suggestions down and was mostly creating pages that were not suggested in an attempt to take control of the story. And during Act 4, the suggestion box was closed entirely, and no new reader suggestion was used until the end of the story. How to read it. Each page has a visual element in text. Look at the image, read the text, and go on to the next page. And if it is a link in the text, click it before continuing. Yeah, I think I forgot to click the first one. If a link takes you back to an older MSPA story, or a SBAHJ page, read the page you landed on. You don't need to go to the next page of the other comic. Just read that one, close it, and get back to Homestuck. One exception is the Homestuck beta. You can either read the whole thing or just ignore it completely. It's only eight pages long. Note, links can also be in images. If a page has a show log button, click it to reveal character dialogue. Some pages don't have an image. They could have a video, even a game. Make sure to interact with everything before going to the next page. And most importantly, do not skip anything. By the way, some text may be difficult to read due to bad coloring, but highlighting helps. And that's all. I apologize for taking so long and explain things you would figure out on your own. But, you know, since this is for YouTube, I want to make sure you don't miss anything. No, just in case. So, we did miss something back here, and we could probably go back. Quite possibly to read about this mod. If the mod shows up. <laughs> there we go. YouTube mod, mod created by Team HSYT. Please show this screen in your video. Oh, well, I'm glad I went back to see it then. It's very good to do. Hello, and thank you for using YouTube mode Humstuck mod. The purpose of this mod is to make Humstuck friendly for Let's Playing. So what does it actually do? Plays music as you read, but it locks on page 440. Yeah, it'll be a while till we get to music, but that'll be fine. Warns you about easy to miss things. It translates encoded text such as Morse code. It restores an unused music track. One page of the original Homestuck has a song made for it, but it was an unused by our unknown raisins. The song was replaced by silence. This mod puts the song back. Uh, it explains a few interesting fun facts. It shows you a certain piece of fan work. Note for your viewers that no Homestuck SRDA. It gives your channel a shout out on the Homestuck subreddit. Three times. Once at the beginning, near the middle, near the end. It warns you about long segments. and lets you know it would be a good time to end the episode. And warns you about copyrighted music. And it also removes slurs. Which is great. Excellent. I'm very happy about that. Spoiler warning! Stay away from the Homestuck subreddit. Even the banner is a huge spoiler. Well, I mean, I never knew it existed anyway, so I think I'll be good with that. 
Yes, we know we said the mod will give you a shout out there, but that doesn't mean you should go there and get spoiled. Just trust the process. We will make the post for you. Note, everything written in this color surrounded by these brackets is added by the mod, well, except for the slow replacements. The mod can be downloaded from this website, and the credits go to the following. Syntax, the mod author. Music player, Shiovan H. Slow replacement, Jernai Valevi and Alt Universe Wash. Morse translator, Squarnish Shellus Beta, Unused Song Restoration, Waiting for Robots, Translation Japanese Text, Giovan H. These mods were not created for this project, however, they were implemented into YouTube Mod and edited by Team HSYT. Pose this to return to Homestuck. Ah, this collection is basically a web browser. Good. Excellent. I'm so glad we went back to read this. Uh, thank you, team, for making this uh, amazing thing that we should be uh, that we will be playing should be playing we are playing this this bird but yes thank you for uh making this wonderful little uh web browser that i can immerse myself into okay smoke pellets oh look we added it to our capture log deck you stole the smoke pellets on one of your capture log cards in your silla decks you still aren't totally sure what that means but you are starting to get the hang of the vernacular, at least. You have two empty capture log cards remaining. Equip the fake arms. You aren't totally sure if equip is a verb? Copacetic with the abstractal behavior medium in which you dwell. But you give it a try anyway. Unfortunately, you cannot access the fake arms. The card is underneath the one you just used to capture log the smoke pellets. You'll have to use the pellets first in order to access the arms. But this is probably unadvisable, so it should just make your room lousy with smoke. Your Silidex's fetch modus is currently dictated by the logic of a stacked data structure. You were never all that great with data structures, and you find the concept puzzlingly and mildly irritating. But with any hope, perhaps you will advance new, more practical fetch modi for your Silidex with a little more experience. And again, doesn't look like we can interact with anything yet. Oh, we can actually pull the picture. Oh, I, I like his little expressions. This is a really cute character. I like you. John, examine the palms of the poster. It, it, is it even possible to get any more hard-boiled than that? You really doubt it. This poster was one of your wisest purchases. There's a nice spot on the wall next to it. You've been meaning to hang another poster there soon. So we click the link. And what it opened was, it opened a external website, uh, which says Problem Sleuth Office Paint, $14, add to cart or buy now from topatoko.com. Okay. Is even, okay. Read the note on drawer. Happy birthday, son. I'm so proud of you. The note is rich with aromas of fatherly aftershaves and colognes. Beside the note is a rolled up poster. Take the poster. Another birthday artifact. You wonder what is printed on the poster. You'll need some way to hang it on your wall. Probably the hammer and nails. Don't come in handy. Remember we saw those on the floor? You first place a hammer into your Silidex, but now all of your capture log cards are full. You wonder what will happen if you try to take the nails. Oh, you guess it doesn't hurt to try. Oh. <laughs> you capture log four nails into the top card and push all the, all the artifacts down a card. The fake arms are pushed entirely out of the deck. Oh, well, they're probably completely useless anyway. But you probably don't want to do that again. Unless you want to drop the smoke pellets and suffer the consequences. <laughs> In any case, you now feel like you have gathered enough things to get down to business to defeat the Huns. Um, I'm sorry. When I always see down to business, I'm always thinking of Mulan, one of my favorite movies of all time. And do some really important stuff. The next thing you do will probably be exceptionally meaningful. Squawk like an imbecile and poop on your desk. Sure, this is the dumbest idea you've had in weeks. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Yet. The polished surface of your desk, it beckons. Combine the nails and hammer, it's like a point-and-click adventure game now. You merge the top two cards, 
The hammer and nails are now capture logged on the same card and can be used together. Let's use it on the poster. You use your hammer and nails card in conjunction with the card beneath it. Yeah, this is almost like a point click adventure. I like this. Now the poster to the wall. Use the hammer and nails and poster on the blank space on the wall. It's glorious. Exactly what you wanted. The old man really came through this time. So do I move it? Click it. I guess I'll automatically combine it. Just want to make sure because it did say you had to click on things. So this is the top screen and then this is the uh the one that just got hung up little monsters by fred savage and howie mandel man that 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 wow that takes me back a long ways Ooh. examine the con air poster oh is this the nicholas cage movie i love that movie that's such a great movie yes it is get your hands off the bunny oh this movie was fantastic put the bunny yes <laughs> Put the bunny back in the box. I said put the bunny back in the box. Why could you put the bunny back in the box? Oh, that was such a great movie. So this takes me, um, oh, what's this? Do we, uh, do we have volume? Let's play. Appears the United States Parole Commission that the bunny back in the box. I knew you was a punk. And I was right. You were playing us all along. You a free man. I said, put the bunny back in the box. So, uh, if you haven't seen the movie, uh, the, the bunny was a gift to his daughter. And... They had all their possessions like in the, the back end of the plane and basically a bunch of criminals took control of the plane, but he was going home. So he's basically trapped in this like freedom movement of these prisoners. And this this guy uh, who's a criminal finds out that, you know, the, the Nicolas Cage character isn't who he says he is. He's not someone who's on death row or serving, I forget the exact amount of years in prison. Um, and this guy's messing with his daughter's bunny. I love the music as well. Why couldn't you put the bunny back in the box? <laughs> oh, I love that movie. Now, now we need to go and watch this movie. This is such a great movie. It really, really is. Uh, is that John Malkovich? I think it's Sir John Malkovich. And uh, I forget this guy's name. But Nicolas Cage is just, he's great. Anyway, John examined the Deep Impact poster. I saw Armageddon. I was a huge fan of Armageddon. I wasn't a fan of Deep Impact, though. Morgan Freeman's genteel homespun mannerisms were perfect qualities for a president residing over a crisis. Oceans rise. Cities fall. Hope survives. Wow! Films about impending apocalypse fascinate you. Plus, a black president? I mean, now you've seen everything. <laughs> Uh, yeah, like I said, I, I liked Armageddon better, but it's not a bad movie. It's just I like the other one better. You marked your birthday, the 13th of April. Another day you marked was supposed to be the rival date for the highly touted SBURB beta launch. It's been three days already. It's starting to become a sore subject with you. Whoa. Whoa. What I, what I, oh, this is the beta. Right. Didn't it say that there's like eight pages where you could skip it or just go through it? But it says eight pages. Let's go through it. 
Oh, you may send us a bedroom. It just so happens to be the day. The 10th of April is this young man's birthday. Though it was 10 years ago, he was given life. Uh, is it today he will be given a name? What will the name of this young man be? To smell Poop Lord. Try again. John Egbert. I like the little sound that made. That was cool. Your name is John. As was previously mentioned, it is your birthday. A number of cakes are scattered about your room. You have a variety of interests. You have a passion for really terrible movies. You like to program computers, but you're not very good at it. And you have fondness for paranormal lore and are an inspiring amateur magician. You also like to play games sometimes. What will you do? So it looks like it's not too different so far. Your arms and your magic chest, Poop Lord. Uh, your icon is not visible or tangible entity. Characters in the game cannot interact with it, you blubbering imbecile. Wait, wait, go back. So we have to, uh, oh, we have to actually go over it now. Uh, whenever you see this icon, it's something that can be clicked, and you should click it. <laughs> move the green icon to the magic chest. Oh, so we gotta move it. Can't move it, can I? Oh, he does it, right. <laughs> Move the cake for the matches. I love the I love the facial expressions here. Out of sympathy for John's perceived lack of arms, you pick up the cake for him and put it on his bed. You receive your fake arms from the chest. You use these sometimes for hilarious antics. You place them in your Silidex. There are other items in the chest. Thanks for playing the beta. Alright, so it said to just close it. And then we go eat cake. You are sick to death of cake. How can you be sick of cake? Come on. You've been eating all day. Well, that's why I got different flavors. You know, you have a red velvet here. You have a chocolate here. You have a chocolate red velvet over there. I mean, you try different flavors. And you have no intention of clogging your Silidex with it either. The cake stays put for now. You hear a voice. You hear a notice from your computer. Someone is messaging you. Examine the incoming message. Hey, it's Slimer. Yes, I told you that was Slimer. Oh, look at that. Hi, Slimer. Slimer's great. From Pester Chum. Arrgh! <laughs> Screw the cake. Piff. More cake. Typhius. Pester Chum. System. You pull up to your computer. This is where you spend most of your time. You decorated your desktop with some rather handsome wallpaper which you made yourself. You are really good at it. Your desktop is also littered with various programming project files. You are so bad at programming sometimes, you wonder why you even bother with it. Your Pester Chum application is flashing. Someone is trying to get in touch with you. Open Pester Chum. Only one of your chums is logged in. He sent you a message. Turn tech godhead. Oh. Tentacle therapist. <laughs> I know it's a... <laughs> My, uh, Sean Connery's, uh, Sean Connery's Saturday Night Live Jeopardy ran through my head there. Garden Gnostic, ectobiologist, chummy, rancorous, ooh, open message. Turn tech godhead, began pestering ecobiologists at 1613. Hey, so what sort of insane loot did you rake in today? So we are ectobiologist. Yes, my handle, there we are. Show pest log. Turn tech god. TG, began pectoring ectobiologist EB at 1613. Hey, so what sort of insane loot did you make it today? Well, I got a little monster poster. So awesome. Going to watch it again today. The apple juice scene was so funny. Ah, oh, hey, that's such a coincidence. I just found an unopened container of apple juice in my closet. It's like freaking Christmas up in here. Okay, that's fine. But I just have one question and then a word of caution. Have you ever seen a movie called Little Monsters starring Howie Mandel and Fred Savage? Ah, but the seal on the bottle isn't broken. Are you suggesting someone put piss in my apple juice at the factory? Well, all I'm saying is, don't you think monster Howie Mandel has the power to do something as simple as reseal a bottle? Uh, try using your brain, numb nuts. Ah, why did the fat kid who ever drank it know what piss tasted like? I mean, his reaction was not instantaneous. It was the 15th day in a row Howie Mandel peed in his juice. Ah, okay, I could accept that. Monster B-list celebrity douchebags are cunning and persistent pranksters. Also, 
Fred Savage? He has a really punchable face. But who cares about this? Let's stop talking about it. Did you get the beta yet? No. Did you? Man, I got two copies already. I don't care. I'm not going to play it or do anything. The game sounds so boring. Did you see how it got slammed in game, bro? Game, bro? This is, is a joke. And we both know it. Yeah, yeah. Why don't you go check your mail? Maybe it's there now. All right. Look out the window. Can we check our mail now? Okay. We look out the window. Oh, Mac and me. Oh, my God. Actually, no. We're back. Ghostbusters 2. And here's our Deep Impact poster. It's a little uh, wheel. A wheel swing. What's that called? Swing wheel? Something like that. You see the view of your yard from your window. Hanging from the trees, your tire swing. That's a tire swing. I should know that. Put this bird. In a kid's yard, a tree without a tire swing is like a proper gentleman without a monocle. That is to say, he can hardly be considered a terribly proper gentleman at all. And there besides your driveway is the mailbox. Oh, eyes light up. The little red arm swinging dealy thing, whatever it's called, has flipped up! What the heck is that thing called anyway? Ah, don't have time for those semantics. The red flippy lever thing means you have new mail. That means the beta might be here. Oh, someone else is pulling in. You're about to hurry downstairs when you hear a car pull into the driveway. It looks like your dad has returned from the grocery store. Oh, great. He's beating you to the mail. Ah, forget it. We'll check up later. Yeah, very vexed. If you go downstairs to get it, you will likely monopolize hours of your time. You decide to chill out up here for a while until the dust settles. Sometimes, you feel like you're trapped in this room. Stuck, if you will. And a sense which possibly borders on the titular. And now, your charm is pestering you again. The clockwork of friendship turns ceaselessly, operating the swing lever, dealies of harassment in perpetuity. Whatever, the Duke can just hold his dang horses. Examine the games on the CD rack. You put countless man hours into this assortment of quality titles. Ooh, what do we got? Bard Quest! The Keeper Havers. Aw, that thing looks so cute. Problem Sooth. Almost looks like Spy vs. Spy. And it don't stop. All the question marks? Ghostbusters 2 MMORPG. Did they even make MMORPGs? Yes, yes, they probably did. Didn't they? I think the oldest MMORPG was what, in the 80s? So yeah, I think they did make those back then. Little Monsters, original Nintendo seal of quality. Uh, fun fact about the seal of quality. You know, back when the great video game crash happened in, you know, 1982, partly due to E.T. or 1983, whatever. Uh, when Nintendo came out, the problem with the Atari is anyone could produce a game on the Atari, no matter how bad it was. And because of that, Atari had thousands of games that were just pure garbage. So Nintendo said, okay, when we put our games out, we need to make sure that our audience knows every single game that you buy has been approved by Nintendo. And they called it the original Nintendo Seal of Quality. Uh, is that the last one? Barry Anderson, call my bluff. Okay. Read Colonel Sessaker's daunting text. Wow, it's a big book. Colonel Sessaker's daunting text of magical frivolity and practical japery. He decided to consult with the Colonel's bottomless wisdom. Good grief, this thing is huge. You could kill a cat if you dropped it. But to really dig into this hefty book, you'll have to catalog it. You're not sure you're ready to logjam your other artifacts beneath it just yet. Capture log, the fake arms, again. What did you just say? You don't want to clog up your- Oh, Jesus. In a momentary lapse of concentration, you accidentally capture log the arms again. Set the pester gym says the bully. You don't think the situation is quite dire enough to go all the way to rancorous. But you still feel the pester chum client could reflect your mood change in some way. Bully will have to do. You guess. This unsurprisingly does nothing whatsoever. All right. 
got your chum is still pressuring you. Answer the chum. Is it there? Please say yes. Is it there? Please say yes. Maybe you can play with a uh, double T. She's been pestering me all day about it. She's make, she's macking on me so hard all the time. I start to feel embarrassed for her. I mean, not that I can blame her or anything. Yes, it is understandable because you are really attractive. I am attracted to you. Ah, thank you. Ah, joke. Ha ha. No, I don't have it yet. See, my dad has a mail, and I guess I have to go get it from him and see if it's there. And I've been busy spending all afternoon just pooping around with my stupid Silidex. So frustrating. Ah, what's your modus? My what? How do you retrieve artifacts from it? Oh, like one at a time, I guess. And if I put too much in, something just falls out. Stack? <laughs> what is yours? Ah, it's hash map. My bro taught me a few tricks. He basically knows everything and is awesome. What the heck is that? Hey, you should probably brush up on your data structures. Oh, I guess. Did you at least allocate your uh, strife spec of us? No. I could free up a card for you. Plus, it lets you attack stuff whenever things get too hot to handle, which is never. I mean, what have you got? Well, I've got a hammer, but it's trapped under some arms. Wow, you really suck at this, don't you? Just get rid of the arms and then allocate the hammer to the spec of us. Uh, how? I don't know. Just use arms on any old thing and see if it works. All right, well, let's try using it on the cake. <laughs> oh, look at that. You stick the fake arms in the cake on your bed. This definitely makes the cake at least 300% more hilarious. <laughs> You're sure Carnal Sessaker would know the precise index of elevated hilarity. Allocate the hammer to Strife Specimus. Uh, hammer kind? Hammer kind. You check the back of your Strife Specimus for the kind, for the kind abstratus you have in mind for it. Select hammer. Your Strife Specimus has been allocated with the hammer kind abstratus. Your hammer has been moved from the catalog decks to your strife deck. Cool. Report the progress to TG. Okay, I did it. Hammer kind? Yeah. Okay, I'll be the permanent allocation for your specimus. I guess I should have mentioned that. Uh, I hope you like hammers, dude. Oh yeah, I mean, that's fine, I guess. I can't imagine it's going to be all that relevant. Catalog, Colonel's big book. Now that you've got some space in your Silidex to work with, you figure you might as well start squandering it immediately. Ordinarily, this ridiculous book would be way too heavy to carry around in any practical way. Yes, maybe this is one respect in which the cards present some convenience. Examine the Game Boy Magazine. Suburb. Why the Game of the Year, whatever, isn't as good as most stuff. I like that's better. <laughs> that's so true. Read the article. Wow, look at all this. So, okay. Suburb is a game that has a lot of cats seem hella pumped up. And this beta is sitting on my decks for review. So I'm like, yeah, man, I'll write something. But I don't know. I'm like, so is this about houses or some noise? I mean, that's fine. I'm sure that's like freaking dynamite in a handbag of some process. But all I'm saying is, when do you get to thrash something? While you're playing house or something, are you ever in jeopardy of getting mud in your doll's dress or whatever from busting out? And I quote, the mouths don't so walk or wicked up ins. Know what I'm saying? Bro, yo ma? I didn't actually play this game. But I gave it 1.5 hats out of 5 hats to keep it real. <laughs> this, is, this is kind of typical reviews back in the day where you, you kind of wondered, did the person actually play the game or not or they'll be reviewing an rpg and after like five hours they'll give it a score even though rpg is 40 hours long and you're just thinking dude you haven't really played the game at this point i'd like to give a shout out to my boy dennis who was over the other day we were going to chill in front of the dark night and was so psyched of it y'all so this one time was leaning against the screen door and stuff popped open and the back deck was wet. He slipped down the steps and broke his thumb on the lawn. It wasn't a long fall, but hey, 
I guess the thumb bone wasn't made for supporting the brunt of a huge useless tool against white brass. We never did watch the Dark Knight on account of Ron trucking his ball and candy butt girth to the hospital. But it's cool. I still got another watch with me. Hotel Rumunda. Capsule log the game, bro. That might come in handy if you ever need something that burns easily. Capsule log the magician's hat. You expand your final card in the magician's hat. Get the funny glasses too. The funny glasses are adorable. Look at them. I want the sword though. The sword looks cool. You don't have a free card in your Silidex. However, you are able to merge the Beagle Puss with the Magician's Hat to create a clever disguise. <laughs> Where are the disguise the fool dad? John? Who is this John that you speak of? You're quite certain? There has never been. No, ever will. Yeah, I mean, this is a really bad disguise. While you're wearing the items, they remain on the card, but it is temporarily removed from the deck, thus freeing up the cards beneath it. Let's leave the room. <laughs> Look the picture. You exit into the hallway. On one wall hangs a picture of a fellow you, you sure knows how to have a laugh. A man after your own heart. You always thought he looked a lot like Michael Sarah. But your dad swears on the many hollow tomes of Egypt that it is not. You're not sure about that, though. On the other wall is one of your dad's stupid clowns, or holoquins, as he is quite quick to correct anyone who adventures such brazen assumption. Go downstairs. Bup, 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 bup. Ooh, look at the downstairs. Ooh. This is really cool downstairs. Ooh, it's a giant package. Ooh. The cursed odor of a fresh baking wafts into your newfound nostrils. Something is brewing in the kitchen. It must be the connivings of your arch nemesis, Betty Crocker. And the rich, body aroma of her pot stinks to high heaven. The mission is going to be more difficult than you imagined. Oh, took me a Wikipedia page about Betty Crocker. Now we know what Betty Crocker is. It's the, uh, you know, the, uh, the cake mix, right? Um, yeah, it's what, it's what we use for cake mix. John, admire the Holoquins. You check out the shelves of fanciful Harlequins. Look at this garbage. I hate this stuff. Funny is funny, but your dad sure can be a real cornball. Sometimes at night you pray for burglars. Examine the fireplace. A bright orange flame flickers in the fireplace. Doesn't matter that it's April. And not terribly chilly outside. In a home, a fireplace needs a fire because that's what fireplace is for. A fireplace. A fire. Belongs in a fireplace, dang it! Catapichagorically, at all times without exception. As domestic myth of unaccountable origin holds, a home borrows the spirit of the flame for as long as it makes a guest of it, much as a moon takes liberty with the sun's ray. The moon's an errant thief, and her pale fire she snatches from the sun. Mark Twain, you're almost certain Mike Twain said that. <laughs> Uh, of course, his actual name, uh, Samuel Clements. Fun little fact. Toss game over to the fire. Burn this piece of garbage. <laughs> oh, look at that. Oh, that's so cool. It doesn't burn as quickly as you hoped. Each game zone magazine is guaranteed to be printed on 40% recycled asbestos. For big ups to Mother Earth, yo. Fondly regard the cremation. You examine this sacred urn containing your departed Nana's ashes. When your father gives a portrait a wistful glance now and then, you can tell it brings back painful memories. A tall bookshelf, a ladder, and a bridge colonel sassacres. He never wants to talk about it. Topple the urn! You clumsily mishandle the sacred urn and ashes everywhere! In retrospect, upon mulling cinematic tropes regarding ash-filled urns, this outcome was a virtual certainty. You probably better clean it up before Dad finds it. Combine Father's pipe with a clever disguise. <laughs> oh, look at him! You think now would be a good time to beef up your clever disguise? Examine the oversized gift. I love this. It's so cool. Oh. 
No? Champ, you can do anything you want. Or, you can do anything if you put your mind to it. I believe in you. Contemplating what could be inside this package is sort of exciting. But it makes you a little nervous at the same time. Open the large present. Oh my god, it's a giant clown! Aw, oh, heck no. <laughs> Capsule log the ashes. First, you pop the Harlequin doll up onto the couch. Having it in the middle of the floor spoiled out all akimbo-like that stuck to you as unseemly. Your capture log, the ashes, to your available card. Combine the ashes with the urn. You merge the sacred urn with the ashes. Most of the ash is back in the urn, but it's a total mess. Really, probably would have been tidy if you just used a broom and dustpan. Put the urn back. No one will be the wiser. Well, except maybe for people with eyes. Ah, let's go get the fake arms again. Oh, he's so happy. <laughs> that thing is weird. Who buys a giant clown? Oh. Now, I'm not, nothing against you if, you if you have a giant clown in your house. I'm just saying, you buy a giant clown for your son. It's, it's yeah. You just got another brilliant idea for something to do with those pointless arms. You pry them out of the cake and capture log them. Looks like Pester Chum is acting up again. Examine the third and fourth walls of room. Oh, face off! I love this movie! John Travolta and Nicolas Cage. This, guy, this kid loves Nicolas Cage. Ah, oh, look, there's Armageddon! Yes, Armageddon as well. Uh, I love face off. That was, this is like a guilty pleasure. It's just such a great movie. Uh, Armageddon is fantastic. Oh, Ghost Dad. Bill Cosby. Man, I haven't heard of this movie in a long time. Ah, oh. uh, failure to launch. It's kind of a weird to find in his room. Time to kill. Is that a Bond movie? That's a Bond movie. Uh, Jodie Foster. Oh, that's Contact. Yeah, that's Contact. Uh, that that's a weird movie. But you have a lot of weird tastes here, and I don't mind. It's it's kind of cool. Check Pester Chum. Oh wait, let's um, just make sure. Click around. Do -do -do. Do, do, do. Another one of your chums is messaging you. Tentacle therapist. Oh, double T. We are just talking about you. Oh, wait. Go back. Did I miss something? Uh, no. Check message. Show Pestilog. I understand you have recently come into possession of a beta release of the Game of the Year as featured in a respectable periodical such as Game Boy Magazine. Well, that's an ugly rumor. I already told you that as a filthy liar. You should probably stop pinning on him all the time or whatever. I can't control myself. I must have a weakness for insufferable pricks. Anyway, I saw him check the mail. My dad has it. I'm trying to get it from him, so be right beat. John? What? You're wearing one of your disguises now, aren't you? You are typing to me right now while wearing something ridiculous. No. Why would you even think that? I mean, that's so stupid. Okay. Why don't you go get the game from your father? All right, wish me luck. Oh, by the way, joking, I was wearing a fine disguise this whole time. Gotcha! <laughs> I know, John. Go back downstairs. You can now execute that brilliant idea that you had. There should be just enough frosting on the fake arms to serve as an adequate adhesive. Okay. Attach the arms to the doll. <laughs> Oh, I love the artwork of this game. <laughs> you don't care what Captain what Colonel Sesker says. That makes it at least a million percent funnier. Inspect the burnt paper on the floor. Bobble Baromony? Is this like the that candy that's in the store that's like a triangle shape? I never had it, so I don't know the name of it, but you put this back in the fire where it belongs. Throw the present wrap in fire. As long as you're cleaning up. Oh, look at that thing go. Capture log, the doll. You can carry hefty items, but that thing is just way too big. Get real. Besides, you don't even want it. Read Colonel Sesker's text. I love this guy. He's so cool. The creepy crawlies. 
Hell's bells. We're having a mighty sporting time of it. Oh man, I hear the I hear the phrase hell's bells, and my mind instantly goes to the Dresden Files. I have I have successfully read like all fifteen books. I haven't read the side stories, but all the main books I've read in the past year, and now of course I'm eagerly anticipating the next one. But if you like fantasy, if you like um detective uh mysteries. And you want to marry together fantasy with mystery. Go check out The Dresden Files. It's about a wizard who lives in modern day Chicago. And it's really, really good. Uh, by Jim Butcher. Hell's bells. We are having a mighty sporting time of it. Hold fast, my intrepid fellow, Cranksmiths. We merely nick the mahogany for our japing chest. If I may direct the incisive ogle of your big old pus to the wriggling rigidity of rubber bugs, plastic parasites, Scorming serpents, pliable pests, and every such order and phyla of creepy crawly. Lake sakes alive, we are cooking with petrol now. In further exhibits, we will dwell on artifice useful to your exploits. Is your peppy's rod in real handy? What about a bit of iron cord? It shouldn't prove elusive. Hearing those writhing rascals to life and set the nerves of some old maid to the wreck of Hesperus. Do you have a bothersome aunt who never seems trouble to find ways with your sunny afternoons? A broad, splintering fence? Block out a whitewash, perhaps. Buy gum, you'll fix her wagon. And what of that tawny gent who puts his lackadaisical lean near this sarsaper sarsaperilla font? You'll have all that listless rust about. Find the spring in his set just yet. You thought about consulting the text to determine exactly how hilarious the doll is now, but this text is way too big to navigate in a timely fashion. You decide to forget it. Find Dad and retrieve mail. The doors on the left leads to the kitchen, from which the smell of baking wafts, a powerful aroma which could lift an especially portly hobo off his feet. The door on the right leads to the study, where your dad spends a lot of his time. You can be in either room. Where will you go? You should go left, because left is always right. Ah, uh, we're going right. No, this is bad. We should go left. Go on the study. It doesn't look like he's here right now. Examine father's desk. Just trying to make sure. Ooh. It's really cool looking. I wish I knew. I wish I knew what these images were. Maybe we'll find out later. It doesn't look like he's here right now. On the desk is a deck of playing cards, one of your dad's pipes, April issue of the Serious Jester magazine, and a spray capture log card. There is also a can of peanuts on the desk. Ha <laughs> ha, oh dad, you won't be falling for that one again anytime soon. Severe peanut allergy is a terrible affliction to cope with. Upgrade custom with hat from Hat Rack. <laughs> oh, I love these drawings. You swap the magician's hat with the bowler hat. The disguise is somewhat less funny, but a lot more distinguished looking. Combine the second pipe with clever disguise. Your dad maintains pipes around the household. A father without a pipe is like a strapping roughneck without a toothpick. That is to say, he has a rather piss poor excuse for a roughneck, if you ask me. You'd rather not take the pipe, though. The first one tastes bad enough as it is. And now you suffer for your comedy. Examine the capture log card. Yes! This will be perfect for expanding the space in your Scylla! Scylla? Capture log the capture log card. The serious jester. Arg! Play a haunting piano refrain. Pages include sound will be perceived by S in the command. Oh. It's a very pretty song. And look how he's playing it. So, so cool. I love the piano. Piano is one of my favorite instruments of all time. I actually want to get myself a, not a piano, but an 88 key keyboard. So that way I can get back to play music again like I did when I was younger. Uh, I really want to learn the moonlight again. I knew it once upon a time. 
but it's been a long time. The problem is 88 key keyboards cost like 500 bucks, so they're not cheap. Play 52 pickup. Arg! <laughs> this guy you play the prankster's favorite card game even though you're alone in the room does renew it in his specially fullest version of solitaire so stupid look at this mess the peanut gallery over there sure is getting a kick out of it you're allergic to this corn temptedly the house oh <laughs> ecto cooler i i remember that wow that goes back a long ways you go back in the living room and contemplate checking the mailbox outside. You think perhaps you should exhaust all possibilities before plunging headlong into a dad encounter. Your television is currently airing a commercial. You exit the house. Predictably, the mailbox is empty. You have already been scooped by your father. The streets are empty. Wind skims the voids, keeping neighbors apart, as if brazing the hollow of a cut reed or, say, a plundered mailbox. A familiar note is produced, so one desolation plays to keep its instrument in tone tune. It is your thirteenth birthday, and as all but the the twelve preceding it, something feels missing from your life. The game, presently eluding you, is the only latest sleight of hand in the repertoire of an unseen riddler, one to engender a sense not of mirth but of lack. His coarse schemes are those less of a prankster than a common pickpocket. His riddle is absence itself, it is a mystery dispersing altogether, like the moon's faint reflection with even one pebble of inquiry dropped in its black well. It is the most diabolical riddle of all. Absence diminishes little passions and increases great ones as wind extinguishes candles and fans of fire. Walt Whitman. Yes, you are certain Walt Whitman said that. 100% positive. You have a feeling it's going to be a long day. Leave a surprise for the mailman. No, 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 no! So you finally left the mail on the car. Oh, there's a package. The door is locked and your dad has a car keys. Peering through the driver's side window. You don't see any mail, but you do see a green package. There is also something underneath it that looks like a slip of paper. Could these items have come in the mail? You don't see anything else that's usually in the mail, like bills and coupons. Maybe your dad forgot to take the stuff inside. Spying the kitchen. You try to get a gander through the kitchen window. But you can't see a whole lot. Seems your dad has been doing so much baking the glass is steamed up. Hey, it's that symbol though. God, he is so weird. But you can see what's on the table just beside the window. It looks like the mail is there. Included among it is a red package, some bills, your dad's PDA, and the envelope. It appears to be suspiciously labeled with the suburb logo. Could it be? Unfortunately, the window is locked. Go back into the kitchen. You have no other choice. You are going in. Clever disguise. It's time to work your magic. Enter. <laughs> Look at the animations. Oh, it's so good. Put them on, take them off. Your dad sees right through your costume. You don't know what you were even thinking with this foolish ruse. You want to equip the clever disguise. Your dad wheels a dreaded artifact of confection. It stands between you and the mail. There's only one way to settle this. Strife! Yes! That's so cool! This is my jam, an RPG right here. This page is a first interactive game. Retrieve the package of Fleet 2 Room. Alright, so. Agree! Auto pay 
Stay! Ajure. Ajure. Agreed! I like a little slime that pops up. Do it again. One more time. Alright, retrieve the package and flee to your room. I was gone. <laughs> oh my god, he's got a pie in his hand. You cannot abscond. This pesky guardian is blocking your path. You will need to engineer some sort of distraction. And now he brings us yet another artifact of confection. This man is ruthless. You better brace for impact in the most comedically striking fashion possible. Put the disguise for defense. Uh-oh. Oh! The Beagle Aegis absorbs a bunt on the treat. Looks like Dad will enjoy the prankster's gambit on that exchange, as is usually the case. Capture log the Python. You take the Python and unequip the Beagle Pus. Everything in your Silidex is pushed back a card, and the smoke pellets are ejected from the deck. Yes, this could be just a distraction that you were. Nothing happens. What a huge letdown! Take the cake. With two great forces oppose each other. The victory will go to the one who knows how to yield. Oscar Wilde. Wise words by a man who likely could resist everything but temptation. The cake forces Colonel Sassaker's text out of your syllabus. A seed! Sasker, you beautiful bastard! Now's your chance! Abscond! <laughs> Now that your dad is busy placating the smoke detector, you, sneak, you safely sneak away. Take the PDA. You snag your dad's PDA. Maybe later you'll switch the background image to something hilarious as a prank. Besides, it might come in handy later. Your spare capture log card is forced out of the Silidex and consequently integrate it with the deck. You now have five cards to work with. Take the package. The red package is addressed to you. Take the envelope. You got the suburb beta! But we lost our disguise. Exit the kitchen. Get on the get the cake on the couch. The capture log, the cake on the couch, explain the Python from the bottom card. Combine the cakes to make a double decker cake. You then merge the two cakes across all five cards. Everything in your Silidex is smushed between the cakes. Why did you think these things were for <laughs> Look at that! Retreat upstairs! Run away! You pause at the juncture and head down the hall. You are going to need somebody to clean up the mess you are about to make dissecting this cake. To the left is a bathroom, to the right is Dad's room. It is locked and you are forbidden from ever entering. He has secrets. Go to the bathroom and grab a towel. Oh, look at this! Aww, look at the Slimer! You enter the bathroom. You can see a backyard from the window. The jewel in his crown is the swing set which has provided you with years of joy. There is also a spring-mounted pogo ride which has been responsible for more than one painful injury and has provided you with years of lament. On the sink is your dad's razor. On the back to the side is a fresh towel. Remember the PDA envelope and package from cake. <laughs> Look at this all. Capture log in it. You take the raisin and use it to perform surgery on the cake. You take the towel and clean off extracted goods. Yeah, this is exactly like a point and click adventure game. Retrieve your items. The items force a manhandle cake into the toilet. Woohoo! And just like that, your Silidex is full again. God, this thing is annoying. Go to bedroom. <laughs> Look at the expression. Oh, the cake fell on the floor. Admire failure to launch poster. You're not usually into chick flicks, but Matthew McConaughey's cool charisma could salvage any heap of smoldering wreckage. This is your McConaughey wall, a casual shrine to an amazing actor. The film above that one is a lot better, you think. Can you see her? I want you to imagine that little girl. <laughs> no, imagine she's right. You got us, Matthew. Your, small, your smooth talking exposed your our latent racism. Dang, you are good. I've never... 
Don't think I've ever seen that movie. Never seen that one. I have seen Contact. I forgot he was in Contact. I remember Jodie Foster. That's about it. Check the pester chum. Oh, let's see. Began pestering ecobiologist uh, Garden Gnostic. Hi, happy birthday, John. Hello. Okay, I will talk to you later. See, he's pestering. Uh, TG began pestering. Hey, TG is looking for you. Why are you even so popular all of a sudden? Is today some sort of special occasion or something? What did you, uh, did you do something to curry favor with the ladies? Did you break a leg on puppy or something? Dude, what are you doing? Is now an idol chum. I discovered a comet that is going to destroy the earth and was named after me. Now I am famous. Everyone wants to talk to me a lot. No, stop. Just no. To talk about your awful stupid movies and make references to them. Your gross man bro crush on Matt McConaughey is an unsavory thing to behold. It's McConaughey. Ah, it sounds like a noise a horse would make. <laughs> I eat dumb. It's equally dumb are all those pictures of that clown you got hanging up. Hey, Matt McConaughey is a good actor, though. Those are my dads. I was talking about Nick Cage. Hey, don't mess with Nick Cage. A what? No, man, Nick Cage is sweet. So sweet. Aha, so lame. You don't even like him, ironically. Anything like this is for real, isn't it? Ha ha ha. I do things ironically sometimes. What about what I sent you for your birthday? Nah, those are awesome. What? No, they're stupid, which was a joke. The ironic joke, get it? Wait, you're actually wearing them, aren't you? Well, I'm wearing them ironically because they're awesome. The fact that they're ironic makes them awesome, and vice versa. You taking notes on how to be cool? Jesus, get a pen. You realize they touch Stiller's weird sort of rock face at some point? Ew, yeah, oh, well. Anyway, speaking of which, did you get my mail? Yeah. Uh, did there happen to be a package there? Yeah, there's a big red one. Ah, you shouldn't, you should probably open it. I would, but it's trapped under the suburb beta, so I'll probably open it after I install the beta. Oh man, the beta came. Yeah, you want to play it? Haha, no way. Why not? Sounds so hell's a point. Just get Table T to play it. She's all about that. Where'd she go? Ah, her is blinking on and off, I guess. Probably be back online soon. Ay, oh, Christ, in the sidecar, you still using the stack moda? Seriously, dude? You need to bone up on your data structures. That stuff is just ridiculous. Okay, oh well. Open browser and go to msbadventures.com. You decide to space it on the computer for a while before doing anything important. You open the Typhus web browser and direct it to what is indisputably the most amazing website ever created. MS Paint Adventures Midnight Crew You are members of a sinister gang called the Midnight Crew. Your nefarious plots are serpentine in their complexity. Your schemes convoluted. You are planning a heist in your underground hideout. What will you do? The new adventure is okay, but you're not sure if you like it as much as the last one. Install the suburb beta. You decide it's time for less meta and more beta. You insert the CD and install the suburb beta. What the heck is this? Skynet Systems Incorporated All Rights Reserved. It's running. Waiting for a server to establish connection? Bone up on the data structures. <laughs> data structures. Discrete mathematics. A cake. Math? This? Automata. You go to your closet where you keep a lot of clothes and an array of handy computer programming guides. Read the Data Structures book. Data Structures for A-Holes by Buckmeister... Buckminster... Funny Uncle. I think my rage just put his pants. Your ignorance just made me throw up a little. Get a clue, you computer illiterate piece of garbage. Free, fetch, modus, and back. You're not sure you really want to dig into this huge tome. It looks really boring and kind of ornery. Maybe I'll just check out that free modus instead. Get the free fetch modus. You turn to the back inside cover where a free fetch modus is included in a plastic sleeve. The one is dictated out by the logic of cute data structure. Operating out, operating on a first in first out method rather than the first in last out method of a stack. Okay, so that's not foil. FIFO. Apply the fetch modus to Solidex. Items capture logged in your Solidex are no longer immediately accessible. You can only use items on the bottom card and must wait for items on upper cards to be pushed back to it. For instance, the bad red package is now inaccessible. You can only use the razor at the moment. The smallest says Draco has significantly upgraded your previous one. In fact, it almost seems more inconvenient. I figure might as well give it a chance, so switch back to stack modus. You wonder, you suddenly wonder if this is even possible. 
You don't remember if you even had a physical card for this deck, Modus. You find this all to be a little abstract, and you prefer not to think about it too much longer. Put down the razor. Put it down? You're not quite sure you understand. Pick up two items. You capsulogged one of the cakes. You finally find it useful. All these loading price trees. Dead weight. Get the other cake. So you pick up the cake. And what is that? That fell. Oh no. What happened to the knife? The same cakes caused the razor to launch out of the front of your Silidex. Oh good lord. That beautiful face. Who wish the razor would have failed to launch <laughs> Get more stuff. Oh, we got the sword now. Ooh. You open your magic chest and catalog one of your favorite books of all time, Wise Guy by Mike Cavaney. And there goes the fresh towel, right on our head. Might as well grab those cups. Oh my gosh! What happened here? Man, oh man! Went right out the window! You take the trick handcuffs, expel the PDA like a bullet. Oh my god, that's gonna kill us. Oh, God dang it. Open up the package. To EB from TG. You examine the packages from one of your internet chumps. It's bound in packing tape, though. You'll need something sharp to open it. Ah, of course, the razor. It's also simple. You wonder why you didn't get the razor. Ah! Now the package flew out. Pick up the package again. Wow, this thing is more annoying. That's right. Oh, my gosh! Like, things are flying everywhere! Oh no, not McConaughey's face! Poor guy. Let's take this from the top. Capture log the guy. Oh man! Please stop capture logging things! You're gonna die here! Oh my gosh, look at the window! Look at the cake! You take the glass shards in quick succession and duck for cover. Your Silidex rains devastation on your room from above. And now that your cards are packed with glass, you probably don't want to do that any kind. And you won't, don't want to do that again anytime soon. You should probably go get that stuff before you forget. Use a razor on the red package. You open the package. There's something suspicious inside. Something suspiciously dirty and smelly? It's just a bunny! Hey, it's a bunny! Much like the one held hostage. Briefly by Malkovich's Cyrus the Virus. Yes, Cyrus the Virus. While taunting hard luck protagonist Cameron Poe. A strikingly familiar to the one scooped up from the soot of a burning Vegas strip by Cage's Poe and offered to his daughter. A gesture symbolic of a tattered exterior surrounding a heart of gold. Poe wasn't much to look at, but he was a good man. But no, it is merely, it's not merely like that bunny. Coin this over authenticity. It is the very same bunny! Oh my god, it's so awesome! Check this out, says Bird Beta. It looks like a peer is trying to get your attention. Okay, look at the monitor. Uh, Skynet system incorporated, uh, trying to connect with you, establish connection, press enter when ready. Check the window. Hey, it's double T. It looks like you managed to retrieve the beta. Excellent. I'm going to try to connect. Well, okay, but I just got the most awesome present. The rabbit? It's so sweet. I've heard tales of this wretched creature often. It's Homeric Legend is practically now enconced in the fold of my personal mythology by now. Uh-huh. Wait, what? Why don't we focus on the matter at hand? Okay, the game. Yeah. I don't really know how this works. What am I even looking at here? You're running the client application? I'm running the server, so I'm the host user. I've established a connection with you. This is sufficient for us to play the game. Oh, okay then. So why don't we get started? Press enter. It's loading. Let's go.
Let's go. Suburb. Now store the interface buttons. Ah. Oh, so we have all these buttons now. Fantastic. Well, we'll pick up here in the next episode, my dear friends. I want to say thank you all so very much for joining us. So this is the first episode of a new playthrough. I do want to give a huge thank you to our wonderful, amazing Patreon and YouTube supporters or members. Chenny Kuti, Techno Trouble, Zuzulis, Haiti Pateri, Tapris, and Silver Pigeon. If you'd like to support me in that way, link is in the description below, or you can click the join button on YouTube. I just want to enjoy good games with you. And if you'd like to help, watch the video, comment on the video, like the video, and uh, let me know what you guys think. Because one of the greatest things about doing games on YouTube is having a conversation with people as we play these awesome games. Have you played Homestuck before? Let me know what you think so far, but please, 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 I must say this, and I must say this again. No spoilers, please. No spoilers. No spoilers. Let me enjoy this game for the first time, as anyone should, with no idea of what's going to happen next. I hope you have a wonderful, fantastic, amazingly awesome day. And until next time, so long, and take care. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to comment on what you saw and what you'd like to see next. I always love to hear your thoughts. But before we go, please remember that you matter, and you are brilliant, and you are loved, and you should always be true to yourself. Never let the world tell you any different. Much love to you from your friendly, feathered, flightless bird.